John Morse, the country director of the Danish Committee for Aid to Afghan Refugees, is a non-profit NGO which has been providing support to Afghanistan since 1984. Um, he's with us this morning. Uh, good morning, John. Now, your organisation has been involved with, the Afghanist with Afghanistan for nearly 40 years. Um, what does the resurgence of the Taliban mean for the Afghan people? Uh, good morning, and uh, thank you for giving this opportunity to talk to you. Um, uh, I'm trying to support my staff as best I can. Uh, there's, there's mixed um, feelings. Um, the older guys that have worked for us for a long time are a little bit more relaxed. Um, but there's a massive divide between the Taliban uh, and the new generation that we've been supporting over the past um, 19, 20 years. And I think that's that's the generation that are very, uh, very, very worried and concerned, and, and that's the people that you're seeing mostly around the airports. Mm, cause I, because it's been 20 years, so uh, as you said, there's a whole new generation of, of people with very different views um, to, you know, the earlier Taliban perceptions. How is this going to be accommodated? That's the transition that we're going through now, uh, and that's why so many people are, are worried. Um, it kind of started happening last Thursday. Um, I, uh, I have 120 people in my, in my Kabul office, a uh, mix from, from the guys that have worked for us for a long time to um, uh, graduates that have just left university. Um, so I, I, I got all my staff together and tried to say, be strong and um, you know, let's see what happens and, and let's count on things that are important, like the family and trying to, trying to uh, get Dakar to, uh, to stay so we can help the people. Uh, and then it just went so quickly. Uh, from Saturday, uh, we were very, very wired. Uh, Sunday, they came into the office, but then, but then all the females had to go home. Um, and then fr from then on, you know, I don't think anybody could, uh, could guess how quickly it changed and how quickly the Taliban come in. You're in Kabul this morning. Um, what, what is the latest... Uh, there, I mean, what's the situation, frankly, like in the city right now? It, it seems that kind of there's been some return to normality in that shops are reopening, uh, maybe banks and others. Just give us a sense of what, what things are like one week on, really, since we saw that very speedy move by the Taliban across the country. Yeah, so um, Monday was a, was a scary day for all. Uh, everybody was locked in, very quiet. Um, Tuesday, I still kept my office open, so some staff did come in, but um, not much work was done. Lots of people around the garden talking and trying to uh, uh, get over the shock and the, and the speed of what's happened. I think we're quite lucky that there's been uh, holidays in, in Afghanistan uh, Wednesday and Thursday, so that gives people time to, uh, to um, re-evaluate, to stay with their family. Um, I actually got assured by, by my uh, national staff that it was safe for me to leave the office yesterday, so I actually drove around the city. Um, we were stopped a couple of times by the Taliban. They checked our passports and, and waved us on. Um, they come across quite um, uh, confident and aggressive. Um, lots of young kids with, with guns. So, um, but uh, as long as you, uh, you do what they say, they seem to be leaving us alone. Uh, lots of more people have been coming out of their, um, of their houses and shops have been, uh, been, uh, been opening. Um, the big milestone for me is, uh, is tomorrow. Um, we can't do things with, with, um, with money transfers and, and uh, cash. I say cash a, a little bit with a loose tongue because I think that's, we're not going to see much of that for a long time. But, um, yeah, the banks and trying to get that, that normancy up and running, we'll, we'll um, see how the next few days progress. Um, if, if, if people haven't got money to buy food, there's no point in the shops opening and things will, will get uh, bad very, very quickly if that happens. I just wanted to ask you um, two questions. Well, the first one is about, you said that the, the women had to go home, the girls had to go home because they, I don't know, why? Why did the women have to go home? Is it, is it, is it re 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 resorting to how it was before? Well, the unknown. It was happened so quickly that, that um, uh, I suppose everybody goes back to their safe haven, don't they? I didn't, I didn't make people go home. On, on Sunday... Um, Sunday morning, like I said, everybody was in the office. I was stood by my office gate, counting the guys in, showing them that I was there, uh, and um, very proud that they came to work. Um, and then social media kicked in, and, and um, uh, you know the local radio, and you could tell that the, the atmosphere of the office changed. I told the guys that if you want to go home, if there's someone at home and you can go home, or you feel you can go home safely, go home. My office is actually a haven for a lot of people, uh, for, for the young girls. Um, 
uh, this is their first opportunity for a job. They're very keen to keep their job, uh, and it's networking with, with, with other um, other females. So I understand stand how important that is, and I'm, I'm trying to to get clar uh, clarification of um, that I can carry on uh, supporting my female staff in the office, uh, supporting the, the females that work for me in the provinces. I'm working in 26, 28 provinces. Uh, we've been working in Taliban provinces for a very, very long time. Um, but again, uh, the change and uh, the confidence that the Taliban have now, we are uh, working hard to uh, get some confirmation of um, what's safe and what isn't. Now, I just want to ask you, the, the rest of the world is talking about COVID-19. I haven't heard any mention of COVID-19 or, or coronavirus in Afghanistan. Is, is there an issue at all with it or, or has it somehow evaded Afghanistan? Uh, I've got loads of theories about the coronavirus. Um, it kind of hit us quite bad um, maybe two and a half months ago. Uh, I was lucky enough to get um, the Ministry of Health into my office uh, and I vaccinated all my office which, and, and their second jab was done. Uh, I think four weeks ago. Um, no, no one's talking about the coronavirus here. Uh, and, just... I, and we're not getting, we're not feeling that, that actually it's affecting us either. Uh, just, just before you go, um, your plans, I mean, uh, I'm assuming you're, you're a British national, but are you planning to stay there in Afghanistan? Uh, and then, frankly, how worried are you, or are you worried about your own safety and, and what may well happen there in the weeks and months to come? Um... I've been working here for quite a long time. I've been lucky enough to um, be here for over um, 17 years, and I've been the director of Dakar for over seven. Um, I work very, very closely with my national staff, and I trust them. I trust them very well. I have milestones. Um, the milestone I've been working with um, recently is I have I have um, four other internationals. Um, three of those: um, Sri Lankan, Ugandan, and, and Ethiopian. Um, their passports aren't so easy as, as others, so I've been working very, very hard to try to get those out of the country. Um, sadly, um, the UN has been helping me do that and they've been trying to get to the airport on three occasions and they haven't actually uh, achieved it yet. I'm hoping that maybe uh, in the near future they'll do that. Uh, when I get those guys out, uh, I think about myself and I have a, um, a young guy here, Marco, that's supporting me. Um, so him and I will, will think about that. But um, at the moment, um, like I said, the banks tomorrow is a big thing. Um, let's see what happens there. Um, I haven't planned anything yet. Um, I'm in the network. There's, there's other internationals here as well, and we're talking to each other. Um, the British government has reached out to me, um, so I do have their contact details. Um, but at the moment, like I said, I'll take uh, a milestone at a time. Okay, John, really, really interesting mm -hmm. stuff.